Okay, so this is a, a sort of more detailed explanation of how to get started with Zoomers for Google. Okay, top left hand or top right hand corner of the flat panel, you'll see activate a license. So go there, enter in the license key that you're provided with, along with uh, an education account or a Gmail account. The education account must be aligned to a, a Gaffey account. Okay, once you've done that, then you can log in. Uh, here I'm just logging in with a regular Gmail. So once I get to here, then I can see lessons that are being created by me. So I can see a view of the lessons. I can sort of, uh, I can uh, sort them by date. Uh, I can also uh, open, delete, or duplicate those lessons. That's fine. And then also as well, then I can build a lesson, which I'm just going to do. Okay, so here we type in, uh, we're gonna type in here P for build a lesson, that's fine. Okay, good. Uh, at this stage then what happens is that we see our um, our Google Drive uh, and then from here then we can create a seamless presentation. So it's Docs, Slides and Sheets and it's Word, Excel, PPT. But then we can also add in uh, images and we can also add in YouTube videos as well. We may even think of more document types to add in the future. Okay, so here PPT, here document, here PDF, here PDF, here slide, here image. Uh -huh. Another image, 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 and um, and then we can also search for YouTube as well. So let's go to another search here. Uh, we'll type in cars. There we go. And then we take this clip here and we pop it in here. That's fine. And then also in images, then we, we have another search. Uh, I'll type in cars. And there we go. And uh, I'll just enter in this nice sort of landscape. Okay. Now you'll see we've got this kind of search area up here. So that's that's currently Drive, uh, YouTube, and Flickr. But we may even add in a, a, like a publishing company's um, search there. Imagine you know, Amazon Inspire or, or Pearson or something like this. Um, okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go to, to play my presentation. Um, here you're managing all of these uh, contacts to Google Contacts. Uh, so if I type into Google Contacts right now, then we'll see this list of this, these various groups, class one, two, and three. I can also invite individuals. So I put an individual's name in here and then it's just retained and remembered by uh, this account. Uh, we can also, I'll show you this in the session, we can also um, create a session ID instantly uh, and then invite guests along to a session, although those uh, guests do not, do not have access then to the flip classroom uh, viewing. So let's go to invite the student right here and we're going to share and present. So down here are two buttons actually. One we've got uh, share, share and present, <coughs> excuse me, which is the, the real time kind of whiteboarding and presentation piece where you're going through your lesson plan with those digital resources in the classroom. And then share only is where you're just providing the students in with, uh, with, with the lesson plan so that they may use it as a study aid with maybe uh, an assignment or something like this to Google Classroom. Okay, so we're going to share and present. So share and present. So this is this is showing the present uh, the, the blended document types, and then also having the collaboration, the whiteboarding, and the polling, and all those good things mixed in. Okay, so once I get here, this is my uh, touchscreen uh, Chrome device. So here I select join, and uh, and then what we'll see here then is that this first document here, this PDF, will actually be um, shared then with the student. So what what we do here is how we do this is say different. So if you want to if you want to share just one document, just share one document. So an example of that would be this Flickr image right here. Okay, so that's not scrollable, right? Can't scroll anywhere with that. But if I want to share something which I can scroll through, I can also do that. So that's quite unusual. A lot of a uh, lot of solutions don't actually offer that. So here I'm able to scroll through this document just independently as a student. It's a little bit less mechanical and, and much we think much more engaging. So the student can, can view that independently, and that's your choice then as a, as a teacher then to decide, you know, what, what is it you want to share, is it one page or is it a scrolling page? Um, okay, so there's a few things going on here. So let's go to instant whiteboarding collaboration. So let me just try to bring this up front a little bit. Um, so instant whiteboarding. So the this is where we were able to expand on a, on a, on a concept instantly then with the student. And if I, I can also make that student who has been I've invited to the session. I can ask that student then to, to annotate as well. Oh, sorry, hold on. So here we go. So they might say, well, I think the answer is 33. Okay, fine. But that's instant annotation. Okay, right here. And um, so it's that two-way collaboration piece. So it's, it allows you to expand on the concept and then also, also have students contribute. 
Um, you can have multiple students contribute uh, on the screen at one time if you wish, but you, you decide as a teacher who will contribute. It's not just automatic. Okay, we can also save down that annotation as well. And uh, we'll see here that we'll be able to save that annotation for later viewing. Okay, there's some other things happening here. So we can also, uh, for example, with this uh, document here, or the, the image, we can also have that as a fully collaborative image here on the, uh, in, the in the whiteboarding area. So um, let me just highlight here. I'll just you know, draw the, the sun up here. And then I can ha ask the student then to, to annotate as well. And the student might annotate and say, okay, there's lightning over here and so on. Okay. So we can also save all of that down as well. So you can those images that we that we uh, use in our timeline, they're fully collaborative. I'll show you where you need to uh, select. It's that little white button right there in the top right-hand corner of the image. Once you select that, it's a fully shared and, and collaborative image. Here, once you go to the YouTube video, so I can play that. Um, okay, I'm just going to pause it there. But what I wanted to say is you can play that independently from the student. And what you would typically do, I think, in the classroom is use the all eyes on me. So nobody can move forward or anything like that. So and what I would do is I would then deselect that and then I would move forward onto the next document type if I want and come to here. Now, just to mention as well one other thing. Um, let me just scroll up through here. Okay, so we can annotate over this document. We can annotate as it's an instructional annotation. Okay, that's all that is. It's just an instructional annotation that you're using during the teaching process. A little bit later on, and not too far away, we're working on a sorry, we're working on a um, a snipping tool where I can snip this area and then bring that instantly into the collaboration area for a fully shared experience. Okay, so that's that's a that's an important uh, piece to know. As well as that, then uh, we can, for example, you know, we can sort of say is is, is the answer is it A, you know, is it B, is it C? Okay, fine. And then here we go to ABC, and then here we'll pose questions. So we have yes, no, true, false. Um, sorry, yes, no, agree, disagree, ABC, ABCD. And then once we stop here, and then we show the graph, then we, we show the results as well. We just exit out of that, and then go on to the next document type here. So as I mentioned to you, we're sharing docs, slides, and sheets, PDFs, PPTs, and Excel. We're sharing images, we're sharing YouTube videos. We can make temporary annotations, which are not shared over all of that content. We can uh, have uh, instant whiteboarding and a collaborative experience completely shared with the students. We can uh, import in images and have those as being a collaborative piece with the students. In a little while, we'll have the snipping tool where anything on, in, within the Chrome environment can be snipped and brought in and made fully collaborative and annotated over uh, and shared with the students, which is incredible. Then we also have our polling and we have our all eyes on me. Now there's a lot of other really cool stuff happening and we have a whole range of, of new innovations um, planned. Um, let me also then just explain, that's kind of more or less the, the, I guess the, the instructor driven side. Once I stop here and I stop the lesson, um, then what happens then is that the, the student uh, receives this message here. So the, this lesson has ended. And what the student can then do then is go in and view that student, view that lesson in that self-paced mode. So that they have this as a piece that is a, a, a sort of a, an additional piece for maybe performing an assignment or going through the, the study for that day. Um, we think that we will be able to, just bring up that image there for example. We think that we will be able to, or we can, we can link this back into Google Classroom by where then you would post an assignment. And then you'd also post a link then to, the, to this self-paced um, learning piece. I mean, you can also imagine that we could also include in here um, a various links to various exercises and, and, and other resources through a Google Doc. I mean, there's, there's just so much potential for student-driven content uh, because we make this uh, piece available. So we're covering very much both sides, um, the teacher experience and the student experience. We're doing that all in an integrated form using the platform that, that the teachers are very much used to, which is, which is Google, using Google Drive, using Google Contacts, using their login, using their resources. So there's very little change. Um, and then also then we're going to make this available through Office 365 using almost exactly the same structure. Thank you.